around biodiesel. I did have some time spent in the biodiesel space. I'll be able to talk a little bit about it uh, throughout my talk. So um, I'll just jump into it and say thank you for letting me be here, you know, to allow you guys to actually sit in this room. I appreciate you guys here versus everyone over there. <laughs> um, so my name's Justin Govin. I actually drove in from Northville, Michigan to come here to talk about uh, Verigo. So probably my first question is, who drove here? Anyone? You drove here? How, how long? How many miles? 1.4. <laughs> you drove? 14 hours. 14 hours. All right. I'm pretty sure I got everyone beat. Mostly because I was here for three weeks. I drove in from Northville, Michigan. I was in the Colorado Springs. Enjoyed some time down there. And then I uh, came up to Breckenridge, which was pretty nice. Um, so I'm here to represent Verigo. Verigo is a new startup company. I uh, started up about a year and a half ago. I was brought in to uh, start a social responsibility movement. Uh, basically connecting social media and social responsibility to gather organizations of all sizes, industries across the entire globe to bring about social responsibility into organizations business model. And I'll talk more about social responsibility and what that is later but I'll talk a little bit about my passions, about myself and why I'm here. So while I'm here, uh, again I uh, was originally in Breckenridge I moved from Boston, Massachusetts to be here. I attended the University of Massachusetts uh, in 2011, I graduated, so I'm a youngin', but uh, I got a lot of entrepreneurial spirit and a lot of leadership, so that's why I moved out to Breckenridge. I got a job offer, um, so I took it, came out to Breckenridge uh, to become a ski bum, enjoy the outdoors. Uh, it's a beautiful place. I don't know if anyone's been to Breckenridge or not yet, but just enjoy your time here. Just see the town, it's, it's quite amazing. There's no one else in the world. I traveled to Europe before, I've been a lot, places, but Breckenridge is still the top of the list. Um, so before that, I had numerous jobs in accounting and finance, but it was just so boring. I didn't <laughs> like it at all. It wasn't in my passion. I've always bleeded sustainability. I don't know what it was. My parents hated me for it. I've always <laughs> been recycling, you know, like, Ma, that's, that's plastic. Why are you put it in the trash? You know, put it in recyclable. And, just, and they're always just you know, give me crap for it. I mean, whatever it was, I was carpooling to school with my friends and all that stuff. So sustainability was always stuck with me. And I knew I didn't want to be in the finance and accounting field. I wanted to do sustainability. And that's really why I followed my passion. So basically what my presentation is going to talk about is passion, the local community and the digital community. Each one of you here has passion for this space. That's why you're here. You got to utilize that. And that's what your tool is. I'm up here showing my passion for sustainability. That's what you spread your message. That's really providing experience for people. You're, you're selling a company, you're selling a brand, but you sell your experience and your passion. You sell yourself through your brand. And that's really something I've been learning a lot, a lot what I've helped with uh, Summit Soap and Summit Grease, and I'll talk a little about that. So my passion started with wind, solar, biofuels. I wanted to find a job in it. I sent my resume to almost a thousand companies across the US. I was, again, Boston based. I didn't want to do finance and accounting. And I felt a wind was in my sails this entire time. It's been for about three to five years now. It's just wind was carrying me. And basically because uh, one company gave me a shot, one company in Breckenridge, the name of Innovative Energy. They were a renewable energy company doing wind and solar. Interviewed me by phone, took me up on the offer. It was only a part-time and I was just like, do I take a part-time job and move to Colorado? I was like, decision's pretty uh, self-explanatory. So I took it part-time, I only had 25 hours. Moved out here for solar, uh, installing solar panels, enjoying the mountains, skiing every day, so that was great. Um, so basically this quote here is, being passionate about something that is truly good for the world will allow the wind to carry your sails. And it's been something that's just been ongoing in my life the past five years since I took this sustainability passion and took serious consideration for it. So the company Innovative Energy, I took the job. It wasn't many hours, uh, it wasn't the best pay either, so I, but I didn't care. I was moving to Colorado, changed the scenery, and I was passionate about it. Um, if you get a chance, this is actually over in the golf course. We put that up last year. It was a big Breckenridge project that they had over uh, 500 megawatts, which was pretty cool. At the whole city ice rink. It was, it was a great project. I think I moved out at the right time um, to enjoy it and kind of give back to that local community. I'll talk more about that. So at first I turned to the digital community, being that my hours and pay weren't the best, to try to find more jobs. I ended up finding a hockey coach position and a bike and ski mechanic. So I got three jobs right away. But again, those were some passions of mine, but they weren't sustainability. So I kept looking. 
I turn to social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and these are key things for everyone to understand that the conversations are being had on these websites all over the internet. And I actually came across a really interesting post on Craigslist when I was just searching, and it was actually related to sustainability and biofuels. I was like, wow, that's great. That's my passion. That's something I'm interested in. It's a perfect fit for me. And that post was actually by Summit Recycling. Um, and I know that you know Dara and Dan, they're the ones that started Summit Recycling. I made a appointment with Dara, had a meeting with them at the grease factory, made my way over there, um, and really the rest was history. But uh, the way Dara talked about everything, the way I, I heard his stories and what he was doing, his passions were just something else. It really uh, hit home with me. I felt I connected with him because his passions were sustainability. That's why I really hit it off with him and we got close and we became real good friends. And I, I actually started working there. And uh, Dan Fernandez, the other partner of the business, same thing, passionate, motivated, really hardworking guys. And I knew this was the place for me. So that's what I ended up doing. Now, if you haven't actually talked to them, that's really something I suggest. I know that Dara, probably a lot of them know, but Dan as well, he get a chance to talk about the way they started their industry and you know worked with the ground up. I mean, I came in midway and I've already seen progress in a year being back at that grease factory. I don't know if you guys are doing a tour or anything of the Soakland factory, you guys are doing that later. I recommend going to it. It's, it's a sight to see if you guys are starting out or even you've done the, the whole grease thing for a while now. Uh, but just listen to them, they have really cool stories. Took me on the mountains, you know, Dan was a river guide in the Colorado River, right? So it was uh, some good stories there and I recommend, they're, they're very inspiring. So I got a quote that uh, I got actually this year, it was a fortune cookie. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was one of the things that actually stuck with me. Uh, so the student becomes a teacher and the teacher becomes a student. I'm sure a lot of you have heard something along these lines and really uh, how it's it's really thought provoking that it doesn't matter your age or where you're from or what you know, you can always learn from someone. Um, so this quote really stuck with me and it actually was something that I, I've been doing I think my whole life where I was always allowing people to educate me and, and learn from whatever they were, no matter if they were younger or if they were older, there was something there. Um, and that's what I really got with Summit Recycling and Summit Soap, they allowed me to, to learn and be educated and they even took stuff from me. So really to summarize that is, is to network and learn and educate. All of you here have something to offer someone else. You know, just start talking with them. You never know what connections you could have. You could have friends, family in the same location. There could be opportunities with a restaurant owner that you never had before. And you never know what opportunities can come about, especially in this biodiesel industry. That so the stories I've seen and what I had at the time at Summit Recycling and Summit Soap, there's just opportunities when you network and you sell your passion and you talk about your stories. So long story short, again, uh, a few months later, I ended up working with Dan and Dara for a whole year and a half. So I had my innovative job. I had some recycling. I was dumping QBs. I was making soap. I was learning all the processes. It was the time of a what? It was the time of my life. It was it was great. Um, I actually got the nickname Hammer. Uh, you guys can ask me a little bit about that one. It's it's not the the cool name of it. It was actually because I, I broke a lot of shit. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> It was a good name there, but uh, it stuck with me, but it actually, it, it built my confidence to learn and be more attention to detail. And I recommend that, especially in the biodiesel industry, just because of the things you guys are working with and um, it's some big machinery and, and you'll learn uh, from some of the mistakes. I'll tell a story in a little bit, but because I didn't, because of my passion, I reached out to Dan and Dara and uh, because of that, it actually led me to learn about a triple bottom line business model. And that's really what Vera goes all about is business um, based off people, planet, and profit. Uh, I think this is where a lot of industries are going, and this is what Verigo is actually handling with Fortune 50 companies right now, and that's really a big thing right now. I know you guys are small, medium-sized companies, but Verigo is looking forward to working with small, medium-sized companies as well as these large organizations. Um, so really, it's because of these guys at Innovative and Summit Greece that got me on my way. They taught me a lot of unique skills, uh, kept me passionate about sustainability, and because of everything there, um, I actually dislocated my shoulder, had shoulder surgery from being a ski bum. When I had to move back to Boston, I actually got a phone call for this job for Verigo because of some videos I made and all the uh, newspaper articles we had. People were actually picking up on that in the local community and then actually on the digital community. It, and it made its way over to Michigan and I got my job there. So that's why I'm speaking in front of you now. I'm glad that Dan and Dara are both here. I actually put it in my speech to make sure to, to give them a nice round of applause for everything they've done in the conference. Um, and, and myself there, I, I really thank these guys. These guys are 
the fucking best. I don't know. I'll swear my speech is needed because of it. Uh, these guys have done a lot for me. So jumping into the local community, I'll tell another story. Uh, Dan and uh, actually Dara and I and uh, Shkai's dog, we uh, went down to Crested Butte for a grease run, and this is one of the best experiences I actually had with Summit Grease. Was uh, on this Crested Butte trip. We took a, a ride down the night before um, to meet with the local community, and they all just welcomed Dara in, offered him food, a place to sleep, you know, drinks here and there, and it was. It was like we were like royalty, and then it was because they admired him. It was it was what he was doing for the local community and what he was providing to them, and uh, it was this experience that they never saw before. And this was really what uh, Dara was providing that allowed them to be passionate. And I admired it. It was it was great to see, and it really uh, stuck with me because I was passionate about this space and and what it was. Is Dara was passionate, and he was passing along to these local community members in Crested Butte. Um, so. Dara provided this experience that I just said there. It's not uh, selling a, a product or a service. You're selling, again, this experience to restaurant owners. The restaurant owner would talk to anyone about, yeah, okay, I'll get my grease picked up. But because Dara went in and talked about some grease and how they were collecting your cubies to be put into byproducts, opposed to your cubies were going into dumpsters, which were going into landfills, it just really hit home with these um, restaurant owners that could now have some guys just come pick up their service, uh, their QBs opposed to their workers doing this for them. It was helping their product. I mean, it was a lot of cool things that the experience was provided and that's really what the sale is, um, is providing an experience. So long story short, uh, Dara and I ended up waking up the next morning for this Crust Butte uh, pickup to about a foot of snow. It was, it was pretty wild to see uh, waking up. We didn't check the radar, I think because we were experiencing the local community a little too much, but it was, it was a good time there in Crested Butte. But because we, we offered this experience to this local community, we had to get it done. And that was because of our passion. That was because of the experience we promised. And then we started to get even more admiration with people who admired us more because they saw us covered in snow and, and hauling these cubies around. And it was, uh, it was a trip. And I'll show you a little bit about that. I'll be able to point it out in a video I'll show you guys later. Um, but we got the job done. And again, it was because of our passion. Um, so before I go any further, uh, I don't think any most people in this room have ever had a grease bath before. Anyone um, <laughs> dumped any grease before? They, they laugh because they know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so. Returning from Crest Butte, we had to dump the QBs. Working in Colorado is a whole nother trip. You know, it's cold weather. I'm, I don't know if you guys are from Florida or wherever. There's there's not a lot of snow. That's you got to dump the QBs because they get cold. You can't leave them overnight. So we're sore from this Crest Butte trip, but we still got to dump about 500 to whatever amount of QBs into the shop. Wake up the next morning, still sore. Uh, need to put a load up for Kurt. Uh, to bring down a boulder. So this is all the good grease to make biodiesel and, and so forth. So we're pumping, I get to the, about the, the fifth uh, tote. And uh, this is another lesson in attention to detail. So I, I scream, shut off, the, shut off the generator. Generator shut off, that doesn't matter. I pull the valve off, forgot to shut the valve. 30 to 50 gallons of grease. Pouring down head to toe, covered in grease. It was. It was a big mass, it just kept pouring, kept pouring. It's, it's, it's not a fun thing. But, it's still uh, on your tab, by the way. I'm sorry? It's still on your tab. <laughs> 30, 50 gallons. Exactly, it's, it's, it's a commodity. And that's really what I was getting into is, uh, I didn't care really about my clothes or you know what just happened. It was more of the thought right away was, I was pissed off that the local community now wasn't gonna get this 30 to 50 gallons of good grease. It wasn't gonna be turned into biodiesel. It wasn't gonna be turned into soap. It wasn't gonna be turned into other byproducts. And that was something that really hit me and it was, I don't know if it was by passion or whatnot, it was because of how I saw the process, the effort we put in in Crested Butte, collecting the grease to then turn it and put into a biodiesel to put into cars. It was just this, chain of events that really hit home to me and it pissed me off and I guess I still owe that tab for the money lost because of everything that it can be turned into. It's a precious commodity. Um, and it, it was really this biodiesel ecosystem that was affected and I'll talk about an, eco an ecosystem a little bit more. So everything I talked about is based off three things, passion, the local community, and the digital community. Again, the digital community, I was able to find jobs because I was passionate and I found my sustainability spot. The local community, you need to work for them. They are the biggest thing out there. The local community provides your business, really. And if you're working for them and providing them benefit, they can provide value and opportunities for you because you're gonna be talking about an experience. You're selling your passion. Uh, there's a book out there that says, uh, one positive message with word of mouth advertising leads to about three more uh, people talking about it in a positive light. You spread, spread something negative to one person, 
it could turn into 3,000 people. Now this is a negative media impact that you can see all across the internet, across television and so forth. So this is really the digital community space where, you know, when you're searching and finding inspiring, be positive, put yourself out there and educate in some sort of light. And I'll talk more about that on what's being said on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, you guys are really the message and the brand to be passed along in the biodiesel industry. Uh, put yourselves out there for it all. So again, passion, the local community, and the digital community. And I want you to think about all three of those for your own personal business model. It's gonna be different. There's all different local communities of where you're located. So I'll talk more about the digital community first. Uh, this quote here, social media is the ultimate equalizer. It gives a voice and a platform to anyone willing to engage. So really, this company I work for in uh, Detroit is a social media monitoring software. The large organizations are doing, and that's what I'm, I'm here to hopefully be able to pass into these small medium organizations is GM, we work with GM, they, they monitor all the cars on social media. Whatever you say, say my Ford transmission just broke down. They are monitoring you saying that about your car and then they're now engaging you and they're spreading customer service on social media platforms. And I think this can be relayed in uh, the biodiesel space or any of the spaces related to what you guys are doing with these byproducts. Because I found it, um, I went on to LinkedIn and there's actually over 30,000 biodiesel groups, people, everyone connected in there. And I know there's not 30,000 people here this weekend. Um, basically, as I'm trying to say is I want to double this and triple this amount of people here uh, the next few conferences. Uh, so just starting a conversation with people. That's what I've been doing a lot lately this year is just starting conversations with people related to my passion and sustainability or even biodiesel, whatever it is. Um, you can find them. Another post on social media, I just went out there and this is what you can do yourselves. Just go on any of these social media portals and start searching. Uh, typing in anything you think that's related to your industry. I typed in biodiesel truck conversion. And I, I got the show trucks. Um, I really think it should be someone more in this industry that can showcase what it is. And the funny thing was I couldn't actually find a whole step-by-step -step approach of putting in a biodiesel conversion kit. Um, so I think that's something that uh, if you guys are into video editing or any movie making, uh, there's a value add to doing videos. Uh, if you guys know what Google search engine optimization is, if you go on Google and you type in something, uh, the list will go populated based off that search terminology. Videos are actually 50 times more uh, relevant in a Google search term. So if you guys like YouTube or you like making videos, I suggest doing a biodiesel truck conversion kit and then start engaging other customers that are talking about this. So on this po post related to making biodiesel, some guy said, can this be used in the new diesels? No one talked to him back, no one engaged him, no one said, yes, it can be. That's what I think some of the biodiesel people should be doing, is just putting yourselves out there and it's reverse marketing. If you go out there and you showcase what you're doing um, in this space and telling them that you could work with a diesel engine with biodiesel, they'll be happy to, to get that information from you guys and uh, helping out their cause for the better really is, is what it's all about. And because you helped them and educated them, they will then be appreciative of, of you guys for your knowledge base. So going back to this digital community, this is something I created uh, with my time at Summit Recycling and Summit Soap. Um, it got over 888 views now, basically connecting the local community, uh, the bodies of industry, and am I connected to the internet here? Let me make sure. Here we go. So this is really showing the process of how we make byproducts with some and so we, we go to these wild grease guys, collecting fries. This was our Crested Butte trip in the snow. Uh, taking that grease, mixing it, putting some good stuff, some uh, smelly aromas to make some Summit Soap. Uh, going through the process, cutting boards, gotta mix it all, make sure it's poured right, let it settle. Doing all these really cool things that Dan and Dara have been able to perfect over the years. Really cool tools, making sure everything's uniform. Yeah, Mass production is crazy. Started a campaign on social media for Pound Soap. Found it, everyone. So, getting ourselves out there to the local community, asking questions. They all wanted to know what this was, what Summit Soap was. Where can I get some? This guy I just met on the hill. <laughs> So 
So there's something you can do there. It's a little cool marketing, but uh, basically because YouTube's out there, this message can now be branded. They can see how the process is made, what they went through. You saw the snowy weather. That was that Crest View trip. I actually wanted to go down there, and I was like, I gotta film this and what you're doing. Um, basically around the local community in Crested Butte. Um, That's an awesome video. Thank you, thank you. I, I think it's great too. Um, again, it was because I was passionate and I, I enjoy video editing, and, but I enjoyed mostly uh, the process of how you can take French fry grease that you just ate, turn it into soap. It just, it's kind of a weird thought, but it, it, I still use it to this day. It's the best smelling soap I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I created this biodiesel ecosystem. This is something that Verigo is doing right now and consulting organizations on is allowing companies to realize what their ecosystem is. Um, I put this together. I don't think it's completely accurate. There's probably more names. I have some question marks that I'll have you guys add. Um, so I have like diesel truck users that are on forums talking, mechanics in your local community, the customers, you know, there's legal and law policy makers that are, you know, affected by this and restaurant owners, probably the biggest one. Uh, this is something that everyone should think about every day is because you are in the middle, but pretend you're not in the middle right now. This ecosystem was operating before you ever came into the picture, before biodiesel and uh, collecting grease was ever in, entailed. They had a business model and uh, really they could operate without you technically. So you have to jump in the middle and operate and provide connections to each other and how you can better the process for a restaurant owner, for example, like I talked about in an experience, how are you going to benefit that company, that restaurant owner? How are you going to be able to um, collect their grease, take it out of landfills, connect the dots about their pains? It's about selling pains nowadays. It's, it's really um, my pain of being a restaurant owner is maybe it's going to landfill because I'm passionate about sustainability. Um, so mechanics, that video I just showed there, I think there would be a really cool opportunity to educate mechanics across the country on how to do biodiesel conversion kits or grease conversion kits basically because the more people that are in this industry the more people are going to be collecting grease the more it's going to be uh, a good commodity i mean you guys are going to be the ones that are hitting the ground running from the ground up and be the early adopters in it uh, to build that community uh, customers i'm a customer i uh i go in track and rage and i make sure to order french fries from now on because i know where it's going it's going right directly to these guys and they're going to the summit soap and other byproducts biodiesel and so forth so um, and I'm a healthy guy. I mean, I, I cut off fried fries for a while, but you know, I'll come back to Breckenridge. I'll order fries. It's it's a bunch of different things like that that really uh, makes the business and the ecosystem work. Um, so again, restaurant owners will then educate customers. Customers can educate mechanics and so forth. They're all going to start uh, this this pool together if, if that makes all sense. And uh, diesel truck owners, that's a digital community one. You educating each other. Uh, in this space, how the biodiesel industry can uh, better perform diesel trucks. But again, this is a conversation and you guys getting out there and inspiring them. So I don't know if anyone else can add something else to maybe what this ecosystem is, you know, any other uh, possibility, people or organizations that can better your organization. Maybe I got them all, I don't know. If you guys have one or two, we can talk about it. The producer. The producer? The biodiesel producer. The producer. So they're, they're in there. They're definitely in there. They're connected to you because you guys are collecting that grease. You're bringing it down to the biodiesel producer. If they didn't have you in the middle, biodiesel producer wouldn't be able to make biodiesel. Simple. Um, so you got to think about those. Everyone in these ecosystems should be thought about each day. Your passion should be sold to it. The local community should be thought about it. And you should be connecting on the digital community about it. So those three things, again, what I what talked about throughout the whole time. So I'll jump about what Verigo is. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about it. I don't want to just sell a company right now. It's, it's really uh, basically selling social responsibility. And every organization should be thinking about social responsibility from the business model uh, from the ground up. No matter small, medium, large, uh, it's actually harder for large organizations to implement it now. And that's really why I think small companies like the biodiesel industry that are getting started off should think about it right away when they start. Uh, social responsibility and sustainability have kind of been interchangeably lately and uh, it's actually not the same thing. Sustainability has been thought to be like environment connected there, but it really sustainability as a whole would be how to better and improve your future. How are you going to be thinking about your business model sustaining into the future? Social responsibility thinks about, you know, today, what are you guys doing for your local community? How are you bettering uh, organizations uh, around you? How are the communities involved and engaging? So let me, let me stop there and say social responsibility is built on four areas, ethical conduct, how you're ethically treating people around you, 
human rights, how are you treating the employees you have, community involvement and community engagement, what are you doing with the local communities. You can get tax breaks, you can do uh, programs in your local community to market your company. There's tons of ways to improve your community, but it will also improve your business. And then finally, it's uh, environmental stewardship, just like sustainability and all those things. Social responsibility actually has pieces of environment in it. Uh, so that's what Verigo is doing. We're, we're putting together uh, a social responsibility movement, mixing social media and social responsibility to create a social responsi responsibility movement into small, medium, and large organizations. Uh, what we've done is create a standard that can be uh, passed along into these business models no matter what industry you're in. Uh, it's not unique or specific to whatever industry you're in. It will work for your organization because it's the basic principles of how an organization should be. Uh, done. Social responsibility and sustainability has been around for 150 years. It's, it's a very old business model, but um, I think that people became profitable and started being greedy. And uh, it's really this triple bottom line that uh, Dan and Dara were doing that really sparked this interest. And um, uh, it was funny that they connected the dots and brought me on with Verigo. Uh, but because of my time spent with Summit Grease Cycling and Summit Soap, I was able to really uh, be in it and understand what it was all about. So really that's everything there. Um, you can go on verigo.com. There's a, a cloud matrix assessment, which will align what your commitments are and what your capabilities are. It's free. Just take it. I, I just want to be able to help you guys uh, understand what's the potential of your business model by looking at social responsibility. Uh, if you take this assessment, it takes 10 minutes. It will provide me some data, but it will also provide you guys a, a hell of a lot more data. Uh, and I'll be able to consult you and help you with everything you guys need to try to uh, bring this biodiesel industry bigger and better because I really see such potential in it. Um, I owned a diesel truck for a little while, about two months, but uh, I was able to really see what it was all about. And uh, I got a fast forward lesson in it all, but I, I still keep my hand in it basically because of Verigo now. Um, so feel free to check it out at verigo.com. My email's there, I got business cards too. Uh, I know it's not the biodiesel industry, but I know I can help you guys out. Um, so thank you for your time. Woo, woo. Thanks guys. Hey Justin, since you, I mean, since we have so I got time. questions. Yeah, I got time. Yeah. Let Do, me know how. Just talk about Verigo for a bit. I'd love to hear more about like what the process is to verify businesses, how how people get into it, how Great. it takes. Yeah, so uh, basically what we've tried to do is make it a very repeatable process and easy for organizations for all sizes. So we're online and what we're going to be doing is uh, putting really the start. You, you do the CSR Cloud Matrix, see what your organization is doing in your commitments, meaning what you're committed to doing, and then your capabilities is more so those documented policies and approaches and what you guys are doing structurally uh, to get your better business and social responsibility. So those are your commitments and your capabilities. We'll start there with this assessment that I just talked about. Again, that's free. So you don't even have to worry about trying to get all costly and all that things. After we'll do that, we'll kind of go back with you guys and consult you on everything you filled out in this cloud matrix. Uh, we'll go through an assessment there. And then if you guys want to go further into it, we will do a full audit and uh, consulting assessment that basically goes through the social responsibility standard. I kind of want to pull that up so you guys can look at it. Uh, to give you a better idea of what uh, Verigo is doing. <clears throat> so you, if you, anyone's ever heard of ISO or other OSHA standards or certifications, and I know there's a thousand out there, but basically there isn't one that's very uh, broad and easy to format and, and align yourselves with. And this is what Verigo's found and positioned ourselves as a niche market. ISO and B Corporation, it takes so long to uh, go through your assessment fill out all these questions and stuff that isn't related to your industry. And that's really what we found. This common standard that can be applied to organizations of all sizes and all industries uh, basically goes over your commitments to social responsibility, what you're doing with your customers, how are you transparent, how are you aligning yourselves on uh, your website, are you highlighting what you're doing ethically um, in your human rights and environment. Um, I've been working a lot with business to business companies and aligning these. And uh, there's a, a value add there because uh, as a large Fortune 50 company, if I have a bunch of suppliers in my supply chain and there's child labor, you've heard of Apple and what they've done with child labor and how that negatively impacts. Like I said, one negative comment leads to 3,000 negative comments. And uh, there's a lot of social media out there being talked about. And one thing happens, it's literally seconds that this message gets put worldwide. So uh, that, that's really what happens in the supply chain and how we're realizing the risk management 
of the suppliers in uh, large buying organizations uh, which, which have global supply chains, uh, but it also is able to provide value to organizations that are doing business to customer. Uh, so if you align yourselves to have environmental policies or you can uh, do ethical things and um, you're, you're monitoring your human rights and you have documented policies that you do not do forced labor or child labor or I mean probably stuff in the US is more about uh, fair wages and acceptable working hours things like that if you have this transparent on your website customers are now gonna see it and they're gonna say wow this is a great organization I really like what they're doing they're treating their employees correctly and uh, I want to buy that product basically because of uh, this pain that they have they can connect directly to what you guys are doing so basically that's, that's really what social responsibility is. Uh, it's those five areas and this is what Barrigo has been able to align ourselves and put the best broad terminology in. Um, the environment is probably what you guys are doing a lot of um, and should probably look at as far as pollution, uh, the resources used, how you're connecting to climate and uh, the habitat or the, that community that you're based in. How are you helping better perform there? And, and we'll go through an assessment of all these areas. We'll ask questions on all these basic areas. It could literally take a week to go through your assessment. Um, we'll take it back. It's really on us to then assess what you guys have already in place. Once we assess what you have in place that you've sent over to us, we'll then uh, give you a score based off what you have there. And then going forward, ongoing uh, offerings can include um, a full on uh, on site audit where we come in and we help you guys align yourselves with your local community, uh, what will better your programs. Uh, Maybe there's a nonprofit in town that you guys can work with to better your organization. Uh, maybe there's uh, some policies where you've had some human, some employees uh, talking badly about you on social media. There's all types of ways we can come in and uh, monitor and help you guys out in social responsibility. Um, and then there's that social media uh, aspect of it all that they're working with uh, these GM and Ford, Chrysler companies in Detroit. Uh, we're actually working with some sports companies now to start monitoring what's being said online. And this is really, I think, the wave of the future is the social media uh, aspect where you guys can actually start doing this yourselves for free. And I'll, is, uh, I can go through that really and uh, find on Twitter how you guys can just better your organization by looking about what the conversations are being had on um, Twitter and so forth. You guys can ask me questions while I'm doing this, I guess. I'm just trying to educate you as much as I can with the time I have, I guess. Um, so you, anyone, if you ever use Twitter or any things like that, I type biodiesel and, and you got all these companies here. Um, biodiesel. Which one was it? That first one, Collective Biodiesel. Collective Biodiesel, look at that, it comes up first. Maybe because I'm following it. Yes, I'm following it already. Yeah, yeah good, then that's good that I typed I'm that so in, I'm already following it. <laughs> 35 followers. Trying to be a Twitter. I think everyone should be on social media connecting to each other. It doesn't have to be just Twitter or whatever. If you guys are connecting some way together, and I really want to uh, pass this along to the founders about, um, I, I don't know if there is a, if, can I search for a Collective Biodiesel Conference? Yes, I already did that one. There is one. There is no group if, on LinkedIn. Uh, basically, everyone has their own favorite social media portal, Facebook. Do you think LinkedIn is valuable? I think LinkedIn is the most valuable social media network out there right now. Why? I've been able to connect with chief procurement officers, chief executive officers, by sending a simple in-mail. I got this uh, premium one for, a I think it was like 20 bucks a month, where I can email anyone. Yeah. Basically, it's the new cold calling, I think. If you guys have people that you might need or want to conversate with or have someone really uh, famous in an industry, you can connect with them right away because it's uh, your inboxes are full. Dan told me he's got about a thousand waiting in his inbox for Gmail, right? Just old man. <laughs> yeah. But LinkedIn, LinkedIn, you can correct right away. This one message, I mean, right here, I, I got my messages up here. I got, I got two waiting for me right away, but that's because it shows a smaller red number opposed to, you know, your 50 to a thousand emails out there. There's also groups. This is a little secret that I've learned through learning about LinkedIn. If you are connected on a group with someone, you don't have to pay for those in-mails. If you go on a website, or I mean, I'm sorry, go on so someone's you're profile. On the same group you can <laughs> 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 Come on, guys. What? what? <laughs> I have to get serious sometimes. So my groups are down here. These are the ones I'm connected with. Any of these people that are connected in this groups here, I can then message and I can save my inbox credit. So that's an in-mail uh, credit that I have. I think I got about 60 right now. But basically, I can search anything 
find and connect your passions. It doesn't have to be biodiesel. Just start conversating with other people. There are networks to be had on LinkedIn that I found are so valuable. Um, I've actually met people at conferences and then I've actually met people here that were going to conferences, connected with them first, said, hey, let's hook up when we get there. Let's have a really good conversation. Um, and you never know, they could be down the street from you, they could be a biodiesel producer that you could be dumping your grease into and you didn't even know about them down the road. You never know and they didn't even come to this conference. Now it's up to you guys to get on LinkedIn, start connecting to these biodiesel people, get them to this next year's conference. Whatever format we do next year, with uh, either, whether East Coast, West Coast, Colorado, wherever it's held, I really think that uh, we benefit from having a group that we can all start asking questions on. There's been a million questions that I can't even uh, answer or, or know even what people answered this weekend about chemistry and biodiesel. I have no idea about a lot of this stuff, but because if there was a group out there that had these questions and people just started the conversation on it, I really think that's what the value is gonna be added uh, for biodiesel and LinkedIn. I think that's a, a great place. I don't know if you guys have it or not. the value of making a group within it rather than having that conversation on Twitter? I think LinkedIn is, uh, the best for you guys. Twitter, I just Twitter for you personally is to just go out there and, and start searching. Maybe there's maybe there's a conversation you want to learn about, but um, Twitter might not be the best tool. And, and I don't want to say one tool is better than the other. Uh, that's really basically it. It's is what we're doing with uh, this company Digital Roots in Detroit and social media monitoring for those big automotive companies. Is we actually monitor everything: forums, posts on Twitter, YouTube channels everything they want to collect all this data because you never know when a one conversation could lead to a sale could lead to uh, customer service you, you never know and that's why they're just monitoring and it you're all doing that manually, basically. no it's a software tool uh, really Google just searches and yeah going out there and all that kind of stuff. I'm sorry what software do you use for that? Well, that's really it's this the software used is digital roots is it's a it's a platform that's like custom to whatever industry the company is digital roots and um, they can consult you on whatever social media aspect there. They, they deal with a lot of large organizations that have a lot of conversations online. Um, basically, they could probably set up for any industry that you can think about that has a, a lot of conversations on every single portal that they just can't go out there because I'm manually searching. Right now, I'll type in biodiesel. That's me manually searching for whatever posts are being had on there. There's people, there's photos connected to biodiesel, there's all different things there. I mean, these are great things too that you guys could all start learning and educating yourselves on, like just getting out there and, and, and searching. I, I recommend at least an hour a week to just going on and searching on all these platforms to connect and find maybe there's a conversation, maybe there's a biodiesel guy right here in Colorado that you didn't even know or your local community you didn't know. I don't know. Basically because social media is just the new uh, conversation starter. There's all different posts here that you guys could put out there. That's what I'm saying is I would, I would recommend commenting to people that are asking questions basically, can this work on my diesel truck? Um, how, how do you convert a diesel truck? And just being that you are connected and you have a profile directly to your company, they'll see that you're a company and but you're educating for free. And then they'll, they'll see what you're doing, maybe they'll buy some. So, you know, it, it's like all connected on social media. Um, I could blab about social media and all these things there. Um, I have a question. So you guys are working with some pretty big companies now. Do you think that you're going to gain a lot of momentum as a startup company? Do you think this is something that companies are getting really into? Uh, Verigo is uh, it's a very slow moving ship, but it has the potential for uh, a global social responsibility movement. Uh, right now I'm building a committee board of executive officers. Um, I have Microsoft, General Motors. Uh, Johnson and Johnson and there's some other big uh, Fortune 500 companies that are seeing the value out of having uh, social responsibility in their global supply chains. Um, basically, by having their suppliers have social responsibility required now, um, it's going to provide risk alleviation, value add, opportunities for new suppliers. Um, and the basic common framework can be applied so if a company that already has the Verigo standard or even other uh, standards in social responsibility, it's all bettering uh, that industry. Um, because now that supplier can go to another industry and say, I'm a, uh, a supplier of this buyer who requires me to be socially responsible, you should work with me, uh, versus that supplier that doesn't have any social responsibility uh, impacts. I mean, you guys are seeing uh, sustainability reports maybe out there of how companies are, you know, Motorola or Sony or Apple or Microsoft, you know, they have these sustainability reports put out there now that 
are gathering data and reporting everything. And I think that you guys could be doing the same thing. If, um, I know that Dar and Dan at, at Summit Recycling, every QB relates to some type of CO2 emissions. Um, that can be passed along to the restaurant owner. You guys can be providing scorecards, uh, different things like that, that just really start uh, educating uh, the customers, the business owners about the sustainability and environmental impact you guys have in the biodiesel industry. I mean, that's your biggest strength for sure. Who would you say is like, if, if Marigo had one, Really want one. Who's, who would be like the poster child of, of this? Oh wow, poster child. Um, I really like Patagonia, uh, basically because they're kind of being a disruptor in this market. Uh, they actually have transparency of their entire global supply chain to going back to the farmers in Australia, I think is what it is, um, of how they shave their sheep. Uh, they then bring that cotton to, you know, a, a manufacturer and maybe this area and they actually have this mapping on Patagonia it's really cool um, they're doing just being transparent they're actually saying don't buy our clothes um, you know go and, and find clothes uh, at thrift stores and stuff like that and it's just marketing wise and, and customers even myself I'm like damn I want Patagonia now just because of what they're doing and um, they're honest they're transparent they care about what their community is they care about the environment uh, basically because they're showing it they they say they're not the best company. I mean, there's there's obviously some negativity, but because they're transparent about this negativity and they're honest about it, customers are actually appreciating that, opposed to liars in the industry. So Patagonia would probably be my favorite. Uh, basically, they'd be the processor's child to Verigo because of how transparent they are, what they're doing in the environment, how they're uh, publicly talking about how they handle their workers and employees uh, globally. So, um, yeah, I, don't, I, I mean, can I get some feedback as far as what, what Verigo kind of means to you guys or do you feel there's potential for um, you know, your organizations and things like that? Is there any... Um... I was just wondering, um, you typically see these larger companies with CSR, people working just on CSR in-house. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I, I'm assuming you're seeing enough demand for like third-party CSR advising per se. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like how how do you guys like what do you offer to them if they you know what I'm saying an additional absolutely um, it's it's really right now is this validation that we are offering you guys is that we're going to be uh, assessing on the Verigo social responsibility standard that I showed you and basically this standard can be conversated with other industries that are doing the exact same framework. Uh, because of the CSR and organizations, uh, they can be unique to that business model and they can't actually conversate with another industry uh, about what they're doing in CSR. What our goal is to have this committee board of Microsoft, Johnson, GM, and whatever other leaders, they can conversate about everything social responsibility across industries. Say, I did this program, you guys should try this program. Uh, basically, it's it's trying to create a common language uh, across CSR instead of. It's essentially a standard so you can compare companies. Exactly. Compare performance and supply chain between mm -hmm. companies mm -hmm. because, like in house CSR may perform their audits different than you know. Exactly. Other companies. So. Yeah, and and that's the thing we don't really. Like, I, I'm so against like competition and competing with other standards and things like that. If if they have ISO in place, great, they're doing it. It's really the, basically the social responsibility movement is just getting out there and thinking about it and start doing it because there actually is shared value opportunities by doing it. Um, people don't understand the fact of donating to a nonprofit can provide tax breaks, you know, and then you guys get grants by that. Uh, environmental stewardship, there's actual economic value to it, like solar and biodiesel, you know, your value goes up. In, in you know I, I mean I don't, I don't know all the numbers of the biodiesel but I know it's better for your engine there's there's fuel economy to it uh, things like that but then also corruption and things like that um, you got to think about the future impacts of what could happen by doing these things in your day-to-day -day. so uh, legal legal uh, ramifications if you did something ethically unconscious um, you know they could be tied up in lawsuits for years uh, that's really what organizations kind of aren't thinking about short term right now this is what Verigo and sustainability and social responsibility is this long-term business model that you guys should all be thinking about, um, no matter what size of the organization you're handling. How long has this been kind of in place and how has it adopted? Uh, Verigo's been around for about a year and a half. Um, I was brought in after Summit Grease and Summit Soap. 
uh, to kind of just spearhead it. There's partners from a company, Digital Roots, which does the social media there, um, and then another uh, partner which handles uh, COPC. They're a 30 year old company that saw this opportunity to start a social responsibility certification. Uh, COPC handles certifications in call centers and making sure that there's quality assurance in what uh, organizations are doing as far as when you pick up the phone or how that customer service portal is, that's a certification standard. Uh, so he found that social responsibility and social media, both these two guys, saw that the conversations would be having on social media about social responsibility and all these areas and then the certification guys saw that there was need for certification and they kind of collaborated. Uh, they developed the standard. This isn't my standard. I don't want you to think this is my company I created from scratch. This is executive leaders that are uh, years ahead of my time and a lot more experience. And um, it's, it's just a really cool thing that I think that organizations are going to be doing uh, forever now. It's it's just thinking about triple bottom line. Sure, whether you're doing it yourself internally or exactly like you said, if you got an external standard, then mm -hmm. you've got more of a consistency. That you can and that's the thing. I, I could care less about which standard you guys do or how you do it it's the matter that you're doing it and that's the biggest thing that i care about and that goes back to my passion for sustainability and making sure that you guys can benefit and learn that these areas are what everyone else is doing uh the large organizations and to think about it from your ground up when starting a company it's just going to provide you value for years to come uh, and that ecosystem think about that every day you can always add to that ecosystem but because of that ecosystem staying and you're sustaining it um, that's what's going to be the driver for your triple bottom line. Um, but I, I think that it's it's a common standard that's going to be implemented uh, from organizations of all sizes, like I keep saying. So I don't know what other questions you guys have. If not, I'd love to get a drink of water and uh, <laughs> relax from getting over my first presentation.